What up guys and welcome back to Thomas Reacts here on the 360 experience with myself Thomas Maba. So guys, I have a question for you man. If you were a leader of a political party, what would you do to encourage the South Africans who are not even interested in voting to go to the polls and vote? What would you do to encourage the South Africans to go to the polls and vote? Or what advice would you give to political parties, especially the new political parties that are looking at people who, who are not even interested in voting? What, what kind of advice would you give these political parties? Because right now in South Africa, we have a real problem where people are not even interested to go to the polls and vote. People are, people, people are discouraged, man. It is so hateful, man, guys. It is hateful. Come election season, it is hateful, man. Even election day, it is hateful the way the polls are so empty. But after the elections, the South Africans are st they, they, they want to complain about the portals. They want to complain about the fact that it, we have a high unemployment rate. They want to, to complain about poorest borders. They want to complain about the health care. They want to complain about the, the education system. The fact that we still have young people who are dying in pit pilots in 2023 in south africa these are the issues that south africans love to complain about but when it comes to actually doing something about these issues they don't want to do nothing south africans men men south africans are something else man south africans are something else the, the, the year in year out we want to complain about something we want to complain and we complain about something but when it comes time to do something about these issues that we've been complaining about we don't want to no don't bother me people don't go to the polls and guess what the anc emerges victorious again and you are back to square one so what would you do guys and what kind of advice do you have for small political parties who have good intentions for south africa what what, what, what kind of an advice would you give these guys please tell me in the comment section guys if you were a leader of a political party what would you do to encourage people who, 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 who are no longer interested in politics. What would you do to encourage them to go to the polls and vote for you? So you asked me a question yesterday and I want to, I want to ask you the same thing because I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about social cohesion. Yes. And we were talking about the issues that get South Africans inflamed and fired yeah. up yeah. and all of that stuff. So it's easy to distract us. We know this, right? Yeah. We can have Tabo. Like uh, yeah. We can have this uh, serial killer who's in Tabo Best, Tabo yeah. Best and, and, and Nandi Mabudumana, yeah. and we can have their case and suddenly everyone's, let's watch this. Yeah. And then there'll be, Julius says something at the EFF's tent, Rally, yeah. kill the yes. farmer. Yeah. And then we're it's suddenly looking weeks, at that. Yeah, two weeks <laughs> of discussion. And, and yeah. then pala pala happens and then we're distracted by that. But none of those three things I've just spoken about have any effect on most people's day-to-day -day lives. Man, I really have to, to, to say that South African media, man, has done a disservice to, to, to our people. Man. Honestly, I must say that the South African media, man, have done a, a huge disservice to our people because these guys are not even reporting on the facts. South African media is not reporting on the facts. And you look at South Africa and the fact that majority of people in the country are not working, meaning that majority of people cannot access the internet. To watch some, some some of these guys you, you you see people like gareth cliff you see people like jj tabani you see the morning shot and the list goes on and on people they don't have internet people cannot afford the internet to watch some of these things on the or, or, or on the internet and guess what they now rely for the information on the mainstream media that's why it is so easy for the mainstream media to gaslight the the people in the country that's why it is so easy for the mainstream media to make south africans focus on on, on dr nandi pamagudumana that's why it is so easy for the mainstream media to say okay today we are focusing on julius malema it is so easy for them and the people they will always follow because they follow the mainstream media for for for, for information that's why I have a huge problem with the ANC Minister of Telecommunication and whatever because these guys, they know exactly that South Africans, they cannot afford the internet. And they are okay with that because the more people go to YouTube, the more people discover new personalities on, on YouTube, the more they, they, they absorb new information. That is when you, you get to realize that the mainstream media that we have in, in our country is, is basically shit. 
It's a shit, guys. And the ANC Minister of, of Telecommunication is doing nothing about that, knowing exactly that these service providers are raping the people in this country. They know exactly that MTN, Vodacom, Telecom, they know all of these guys. They've jacked up their prices, man. South Africans barely afford the internet, man. They barely afford going to Facebook. Never mind YouTube. So the role that has been played by South African media, man, it is... They have done a huge disservice to South Africa, man. And right now, that, that why, that's why it's so easy for them to, 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 to rile up people with, with the whole racism nonsense. <laughs> Damn. None. And the stuff that does, like the Electoral Act, people, don't they care. glaze over. Don't care. They don't pay attention to this stuff. Most people in this country have no idea what the difference is between a party list and a constituency basis. Right. And maybe, maybe they're right. So you have the job, like I do, and Pumi does, of trying to explain to people what we think is important. Many people get it. Let's give credit where it's due. Mm. A lot of smart people in this country. But when you talk, like you do, about the Reserve Bank or about economic policy, most people just go, Whoosh. so how do we get everybody activated? How do we get people to the polls, first of all, because we know that's important. Yeah. If these politicians don't have a mandate, then they can't claim to, to govern. So how do we get them there, first of all? And second of all, what are the things that you think we, we care about that we're not talking about? Look, I think South Africans have not linked poor performance or their daily struggles, such as potholes, robots that don't work, and so they, they have not they, they not don't managed to link these things with a vote when the vote comes they seem to sort of switch off from their problems and say hey let's get, make sure that our people are in power and that's it we'll see the rest tomorrow exactly. so they will they will uh, vote for them today and next week they say there are no clinics <laughs> and they march and they've even banned the clinic that they have <laughs> exactly man I honestly don't want to call South Africans stupid, man. I don't want to call South Africans stupid. I don't want to do that. But what is the problem with us, man? <laughs> what is the problem? You vote for the African National Congress. You tell the people how the African National Congress is going to do good. And your, and, and your child spends the next five years unemployed. Then you blame the African National Congress, but when it comes to time to, to vote, you, you still vote for the same people. Man, it makes no sense. I'm still trying to find a word to describe South Africans, but not stupid. <laughs> right? So they have not, they, they, for some reason, we have not linked the things, right? Um, even if you look at the elections, the, the, result, the election results of 2021, where the end... I mean, guys, you remember that recently President Cyril Ramaphosa was speaking with the media and, 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 and he blamed the failures of the African National Congress on apartheid. He said that there's a lack of capacity right now within the government. We don't have CFOs, we don't have engineers, and we don't have town planners. And, and that is the fault of apartheid because the apartheid regime didn't produce enough town planners. And the ANC Minister of Social Development went to Johannesburg after 70 people lost their lives and said that is the fault of apartheid that the illegal immigrants are, are, are hijacking buildings in the middle of our cities. And the, the ANC Minister of, 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 of Transport also said that today our, 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 our trains are, are, are not moving because that is the fault of apartheid regime. They didn't invest enough in our railways. So what JJ Taman is, tell, is, is telling the truth. Because for some reason, South Africans, they still want to blame apartheid for everything that has happened. They don't want ANC to take any accountability. They want to blame the, the, the apartheid. And the ANC knows that if we go out with this message, we're going to have people who are going to be like, African National Congress is telling the truth. It is the fault of apartheid. They don't want to link the fact that you have a huge potholes. They don't want to link the fact that young people are not working with, with, with the vote. No, they don't want to do that. They are blaming it on apartheid, on apartheid government. It's insane, man. You see, got 45%. People still think, no, that was just a fluke. Yeah. They don't see there's a trend of people being fed up and slowly, slowly changing this thing I'm talking about of not linking my problems, the race that are being taken out. So, so that, that, that goes to the argument of voting. It had to get worse for people Before to Before it gets better. 
Okay, so are we at the bottom now? We're not yet at the bottom, not but yet. this is oh, why. Me, don't say that. No, we're not yet at the bottom, and and, and God. every every opportunity I get, I will say this. Part of our problem is the fact that we also have a private sector that is willing to prop up a failing government. Of course, so we have. They're in cahoots. Three hundred and fifty CEOs and the of. I mean, like, it's so easy for the corporate South Africa to, 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 to do corruption because they know they have the ANC Congress there. It is so easy for them to do the corruption and the corporate South Africa is not being held accountable for nothing. Prominent. Corporate South Africa is, has never been held accountable for nothing. Nothing. Because what? Because of the ANC member. I'm not surprised that the corporate South Africa begs the ANC. I'm not surprised. Companies in this country... Mm coming together and signing a, a an agreement that says we are going to help the president like the president is not a president of a political party that has gotten us to where we are and and so what they are doing is by propping him up and propping the party up and helping with service delivery in as they see it they are delaying the bottoming out where people get to a place well, where they say because they they These see that they benefit they must go <laughs> all right but, they, but they're being so greedy in that case that they 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 think yeah, because only of the they short make term, money the short term greed that they can they can make money out of this and propping up as you say it's a good term because we know who these people are <laughs> we know who these people are and they're also the ones that try to sell this positive message meanwhile pumi's got a point they like they're doing more damage than good do you agree Look, <clears throat> uh, I never thought I would say this, but in February, um, I got to listen to Ibrahim Patel because I've been wondering what is this thing of social compact. And I've even in my, one of my shows said, "Social compact, my foot, man! Don't come and tell me about social compact. You're not delivering. You're not doing what you're supposed to do." He explained it in a, a way that I began to look at it different. To say the problem in South Africa is so big. Okay, we are in such a mess that no one sector can solve it. So you can go and say, "Oh, me and Cliff, let's just be on our corner and do our thing, and bright in the corner where you are, and what have you." That's not going to solve your problem because you got a, a big debt burden. I mean, I don't even, I can't even fathom what it is that what you have to pay back big the number, money. Big number. It's a huge number. You are not going to sort it out by being in your own little corner alone. Secondly, if you look at social service, let's just look at education. I mean, I told our, we spend per capita more than any country in the world on education. But our results are the <laughs> worst Nothing. in the, worst the world. Yeah. They are the worst in the world, man. Majority of young people in our schools, they can't read or write. So where is this money going exactly? Why is this money going if majority of the kids, especially in the township schools, they cannot, they cannot read or write? I mean, like taking your child to a township school, man, it's a curse. It's a curse taking your child to a township school. Because after grade, seven, after grade 7, the child cannot even construct a single line. They can't read, they cannot write, they can't do nothing. But South Africa spends so much money on education. So why, what the hell is this money doing exactly? No, literally, it's not a <coughs> no, it's, it's, it's like not our, our kids can't read. Yes. Ca can't, In any they, say, they say they can't read for me. They can't read. That's a period. You understand? And, and it's an assessment where not, we I, are number... I promise you I'm not laughing because I like this. I'm <laughs> laughing because I'm, it's yeah. so goddamn devastating. Yeah, so now... Uh, Patel says and explains it well that in a problem that big, right, no government, you can elect whatever government you want, it's still going to fail unless we all pull together, right, and do our part in all the corners where we are, right? So in, your, in the media, you do your part because that's where you've got influence. If somebody is in the teaching profession, instead of sleeping with children and making them pregnant mm -hmm. as a teacher, Jesus. Can you just sort that out? Yeah. In the justice system, instead of justifying that your, your teachers are sleeping with kids and turning a blind eye, can we just have one person who is actually in prison because of statutory rape? Just one. Hmm? I've been asking for this one person. Yeah, I asked, right. 
Put it as one of the ministers. I think it was Muzwaledi or somebody. Or no, no, Muzwaledi, Pasha, the Minister of Health. Don't give me statistics that 90,000 kids are pregnant. Well, pregnant by who? By Holy Spirit. And, the, and these people <laughs> carry on being teachers. Yeah. But, so and it's such a shame, man, because for the longest time we've said that these old teachers need to be removed. You need to, we've said to, to, to the Department of Education that you need to get rid of these old Magogos and old Madalas. You need to employ young people in this country. You need to employ young people in the country. And these young guys, they have been given a chance to be the assistant teachers and something. And now they sleep with the kids. The same young guys that we were advocating for are now sleeping with kids. Most of these teachers, most of these lectures, most of these young teachers and young lectures are sleeping with kids. They are impregnating the high school girls. They are impregnating the... It's a mess, guys. So no, they're going to pay the family and say, keep quiet. No, but, uh, my man, I, I hear that. That the problem is is big yeah. and no one what what. Yeah. But the biggest part of our problem yeah. is that we have in place ministers, a, a lot of DGs, and also... Yes, we have a lot of ministers yeah. and DGs yeah. and deputy Who ministers. Are 70. Who are to hold them yeah. to a particular part of the policy. Yes. That even as you try and do your best, yeah. they are deliberately trying to break the system. Yeah. Then, so, then vote them so out. Vote those people out. Yeah. But if you once you so, once you fail to vote them out, which we have, remember, 2019, we were all in a frenzy saying this is it. This yeah. Is up, this is going to be Uhuru. <laughs> and then we still came up no. with the three parties at the top. Once you have now. Uh, that cycle has come and gone, and you have those people. Then you've got a, an obligation democratically to work with them until you vote them out. So next week, next year, we have another opportunity to vote them out. I doubt we're going to vote them out, by the way. Yeah, because me too. The DA, and thanks to the DA, because they, instead of saying, let's have a government of national unity, bring everybody together so that we can uh, have an alternative. They say, no, 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 we're not going to work with these red ones. It's Ray Khafar. <laughs> just run away this is an enemy and then they were going to get some you know generally named party i'm not sure what they are called we've never heard of them they don't even have one vote it in their life to do with an NP. yeah it's an NP and national party something yeah real 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 four deputies did, did i tell you this they've got four deputies yes. they've got a white deputy yes, a de indian and color oh, and, right Anyway. Right. Anyway, those people what? they are going to fail. They are not going to get to thirty percent. Okay. And then all that thing, they are fighting for the best opposition seat. This is bad because at them at them the way things are so bad, we should be saying, guys, we're in trouble. Let's all pull together some some sort of a government of national unity, right? And get the best person out of all these parties, right? The best people to actually do something with their professional skills with their intelligence, with their, you know, IQ and all of these things that seems to be lacking in some of the ministers who have been ministers since 1994 and they don't get tired because they don't, they don't have to do much work. I mean, how, how do you keep an engine with Sarah in office? 15 years, Yo. as if they are doing fantastic work, Just you have to keep them in, in the entire country. You can't find a minister of education who can make sure that you know, children don't drown in toilets. Just, just okay. Before you get to the curricula, can kids not drown in a toilet? Uh, but she's been there. You're right. Fifteen years. Yeah. No, she's been there for such a long time. She, man. In a company, she would get a a a a, 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 a watch, <laughs> a long service, <laughs> a long service watch. <laughs> no, guys, no, we're in a mess. So we 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 don't we don't vote. First of all, the people don't vote. And JJ Tower is telling the truth, man. All thanks to the Democratic Alliance for saying that they are not going to work with the African National Congress and the EFF. And guess what? It's not going to be hard for the African National Congress and the EFF to work together, man. And this is the reason why people have the problem with African National Congress and the EFF coming together. is because people, they don't believe that a government of African National Congress and the EFF will hold each other accountable, man. Facts! <laughs> People don't believe that having Ramaphosa and Malema there in union building, these guys, they will never hold each other accountable, man. 
you know for the longest time i've been I've, like i've been battling with this whole idea of of, of saying like people are saying that the, the 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 coalition of of african national congress and the and the eff is going to be bad for south africans but when you are looking at it realistically you can see that ramapos and malema will never hold each other accountable man never <laughs> never and african national congress and the da that one will fail because their policies are not even the are not even the same that one will that one is going to fail but the DA, all thanks to the to the Democratic Alliance for saying that they're not going to work with the African National Congress and the EFF. Now they've pushed the African National Congress and the EFF together. And you're still going to have the African National Congress in government next year, in 2024. Mark my words. With the help of EFF or with the help of Patrick Alliance. You heard Gideon McKenzie saying that I'm open. I'm open. The African National Congress, if they want the Patriotic Alliance to come, like I'm open to the idea of pushing the ANC up uh, and governing the country. <laughs> Let's start there. Yeah. Some I think the extraordinary number, I think 15, who are registered to vote. I'm not yeah. talking about those who have not even registered. I'm talking about the ones who are registered, who said, I won't bother, it's too cold, it's too hot, I can't go, I'm going to take a bribe, mm -hmm. a day off. Oh, they're saying it's a holiday, fine, I'm not going to vote. Yeah. And the same people, will be in the streets burning down the place saying to hell this government is useless but this is also guys my are south africans are stupid guys <laughs> <laughs> are average south africans stupid because how like how is it that when it's an election day you don't even care about going to the polls to vote you would rather go with your friends to to, to drink alcohol but next week you will be complaining about the fact that your road is like this you'll be complaining about the fact that you have sewages right now as we speak there, there's a sewage right here in front of my house there's a sewage and that sewage it, it seems like it has busted on that house there there's a sewage right now as we speak but people are complaining about this sewage this sewage is like the, the, the smell of this sewage is going to make young children sick but come 2024 election, the same people are going to vote for the African National Congress. Man, I'm tired of South Africans. Man. Oh, people not showing up to vote is also a failure of, of all the opposition parties. Fact. Because they are not burning up, firing up the people enough to come and vote for them. So people would rather not vote for any one of them. If they're not that. willing to vote for the ANC. Yeah. They would rather not show up to vote. They don't even want to give those people, and and that's a, that's but, that's on okay, them. Okay, but, but maybe, and here's the the very scary conclusion you could come to is that maybe people in this country actually don't believe in democracy, mm -hmm. because if they don't, what are the scary uh, uh, alternatives to that? Like if if this democracy thing for another election proves to be inconclusive, yeah. and we end up with these same clowns yeah. in parliament and in cabinet and in the executive, then what What are people maybe asking for? No, we need a catastrophe. Oh, oh, please don't say this. Isn't it already a catastrophe? No, you see, like the, 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 the pseudo-earthquake we had this morning. We it wasn't a, a pseudo-earthquake. It was in my neighborhood. That day. I felt it. It wasn't pseudo. It was real. It was pseudo because I, you know, I just saw it on WhatsApp. But, <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is it's not something that will get people into the streets. And you see what happened to the, with the Arab spray? People didn't think that could happen, right? So we mustn't be also dismissive of a, this catastrophe I'm talking about that is required. Maybe that's what we need. And maybe that mm. catastrophe will jolt people to say, hey, it's going to be bad for our children. It's going to be bad for our new next generations. We have not had that catastrophe. People are just going about their lives. You know, that's why we've always said the unemployment rate in this country is a, is a time bomb. Mm -hmm. But that sounds like a cliche. It was a time bomb. Okay, what does that actually mean? Mm. You know, it does it mean that like the capital city coming to a standstill because workers are not paid what they, they is due to them, or a mine oh, uh, coming to a standstill for five weeks because you you, you are asking for twelve thousand rand, and the next person is in three hundred million. He, he could even take his own money. And stop that strike. If he, if out of the three hundred million, you just take ten million and say, I'm gonna give each of you a bonus of two thousand. I don't know because those numbers, you know, 
I've not had such numbers in my bank account. Like some of you, <laughs> if you look at these nice studios you have, oh, congratulations, but it looks very nice. You sure. understand? So I don't know what is, what is the wage gap between you and your lawyer's paid work. Okay, not you, but in person. But I'm just saying. Yeah, I, the people talk about those things as uh, uh, time bombs, but they, they don't internalize what that actually means. Right? And it often happens in a little corner. So. This month, this year, it will be Sibanye having a problem. She was earning 300 million, and the lowest paid worker is earning nothing after deductions. And then they, they let them suffer there on the corner. It becomes just a news item. Next week is Tswan. So imagine if in every little corner of the country something like this happened, and the country just came to a standstill and said, We need a new government. Right? Is, is that the catastrophe we need before people wake up and say, Let me just go and vote? And maybe my vote will make a difference. What are your thoughts, guys? What are your thoughts? Are you agreeing with JJ Taban on this whole thing? Because I know, I know, I know I'm cutting it. If you want to watch the whole episode, you just go to, to Cliff Central there on YouTube. You can watch the whole interview. It is a very interesting piece of topic. So, guys, what are your thoughts on this whole thing? Do you think that South Africa needs a catastrophe? I thought that unemployment was going to be a catastrophe that's going to make this country stand still but young people in this country they don't care young people in this country they don't care man they don't care about the fact that they are not working man they don't care so what are your thoughts guys what what is it that is needed in south africa to shake things up in this country tell me what are your thoughts tell me in the comment section don't forget to hit that like button and the most important part guys please subscribe 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 my name is thomas mabaso and i will see you next time bye bye